Hey everyone, Josh Powers with Polygon Flow. And in today's video, I want to highlight a new feature in Dash 1.3 called Merge Actors. I use this along with a few other new tools in the latest release to help me create this World War I battle scene. So let's jump in and get right to it. So here I have the base scene using some mega scans along with some custom models I made. I also grabbed a few fantastic and free models off Sketchfab to add a lot more content to this scene. As always, links will be provided below for the assets I used. The scene you'll notice is feeling a little bare. The ground in particular is really flat and uninteresting. It doesn't tell the story of the chaos and devastation after an intense battle between two heavily armed forces, especially given the destruction we see on the building and the tank. Now I could use some mega scans or Sketchfab assets to scatter around, and I do plan to supplement the scene with some of those, but I want to show you how you can leverage Merge Actors and the Physics tool to create some more custom made assets to scatter around your scene. And to do this, I'm going to go ahead and jump into a fresh scene. Here in this new scene, you'll see that I have a few burnt bricks placed around. This is one of the many bricks you can find in the Megascans library, but this one I think feels pretty good for the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and select the bricks. And then I'm going to open the physics tool from the prompt bar. For now, I'm going to hit start and the tool will automatically make all the selected assets dynamic objects and drop them down to the plane. From here, what I like to do is duplicate these objects a few times using the duplicate button. After I've done this three to five times, I'll hit the select button, which selects the duplicated objects, and then I'll hit duplicate another time or two, which gives us a lot of duplicates to work with. Sometimes, especially when using one mesh with unique characteristics, you'll notice some of the bricks really make it obvious they're just duplicates. And while it's better to use multiple assets for something like this to add a bit of variety, one trick you can do is hold down control and hit the reset button up here. This will put the duplicates back to where they originally spawned. And as such, a lot of the assets are inside one another. Now when I hit start, the bricks give us a bit of an explosion effect as they push away from each other. This is a great way to really get each brick to land a little differently, which will help reduce that obvious repeating pattern the bricks were showing before. And if you aren't 100% satisfied with the results, just hit reset and start again to keep trying until you have something you like. Okay, I'm happy with how this pile looks, but the problem is each brick is its own actor. And the more actors you have in your scene, the more taxing it's going to be on your performance. So now what I can do is select the brick assets and then go up to the prompt bar and type merge actors. This will take all the assets and create a single static mesh. Now we have dozens of bricks in this pile, but it's only one static mesh actor. Now I can just type nanite into the prompt bar and select Actor Switch Nanite, which will enable Nanite for this mesh, further optimizing it. Depending on the scene you've created, you're probably going to want multiple variations of the asset you're creating. Just like we wanted to avoid obvious repetition in the brick pile itself, we don't want every scattered instance to be the same pile, just at different rotations. So creating a few variants of piles, perhaps even introducing some additional assets, will really help add a lot of variety to the scatter. Back in my scene, I can now drag my newly created meshes out onto my terrain, and then with them selected, type surface scatter in the prompt bar. And I'll go ahead and add them to the scatter set. Then I just need to select my terrain and add that to the surface set of the scatter. Now everything is set up just like any normal scatter, except you're able to scatter tens of thousands of bricks and significantly fewer actors. If you've brought in GLTF assets from Sketchfab, you might notice that some of the assets will come in with multiple static meshes, even though they're only part of one object. So here, for instance, I have a small dirt pile that I want to use, but it came in as six different meshes. And you'll also notice that when I drag it in, it's way up here, very far away from the pivot point. 
So let's first address the multiple meshes. Just like before, with my mesh selected, I'll just type merge actors and then boom, it's a single static mesh. Now to address the issue of the pivot being so far away, Dash 1.3 has a new feature that lets you adjust your pivots in the blink of an eye. If we type pivot in the prompt bar, we'll see this pivot option and it tells you a few different ways that you can work with this. Center, top, and bottom. So in this case, we're just going to type pivot bottom and it's going to center and place the pivot at the bottom most spot of the mesh's bounding box, which will make it so much easier to work with when placing the asset around our scene. These new tools are such a time saver and will help you really optimize your scene to avoid hundreds of thousands of actors piling up in your environment. And they're a perfect complement to the already powerful and fun to use physics tool. And these tools are just a few of the great new features in this latest release of Dash, and we're only scratching the surface of what's to come. Be sure to join our Discord channel to post your work in the art channel, and let us know what kind of features you'd like us to consider in future updates for Dash. We look forward to seeing what you create. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.